Hello and welcome to the 30K channel. I'm your host, David, and welcome to this first episode of uh, the Corona Chronicles and Setting the Scene. Now, if you're unfamiliar about what this new series of uh, videos is all about, please go back and watch the, um, uh, the Corona Chronicles intro and that'll tell you all about what we're doing. But uh, as we outlined there, uh, this uh, the setting the scene is essentially we are going to, or I am going to build a, a small two by two board uh, for two purposes. One to uh, hopefully uh, to show you how to diversify your battlefields that you fight over, uh, but also um, you know we're all at home at the moment. There's only so much painting you can do, uh, so it'd be nice to get some really good uh, photos of your models and the stuff you've been painting uh, and, and put it within a nice scene. A, a lot of people take photos of their models uh, with the black books or, or some of the, the Forge World books where they pull the top of the book up and they've got the kind of the, the faded dark or grey scale images behind. They do look great, no doubt about it. They're, they're a fantastic little backdrop. But uh, if you've got a bit of time on your hands, you can really set a scene up uh, and uh, and take a photo of your lovely models. And it, it just really helps tell the story a little bit um, and just gives you something to do as well. But, but but as a wider point, the tips in this little segment here, you can apply to your battlefields in general and build a six by four of these larger versions of this, of this section here. So it, it's just a little bit of interesting side project for you, I guess. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, you know, I've built this two by two board. It's four pieces of wood and a fifth bit in the middle. And then I've just got some foam board, uh, which I found in a garage um, and just built a perimeter. There is, I did film a board build for this, uh, but, um, but it's not the best. It's just me and my back garden cutting stuff up, but I will put it on the website uh, for you to watch, but it's a super basic box with some sides on it. Now, if you haven't got all the tools and wood available to you and you want to create a scene to take some photos with, all you need is literally the um, the lid of a large tub. It could be a plastic, you know, that you can sort of get the larger ones from any superstore or um, or DIY store. And if you have sort of a, you know, a two foot square one or, or a large square, you can just put that down as your base and then use the aggregate and various bits of bolts, which I'll show you in this video. So, you know, you, you can achieve, you can achieve some really interesting effects with very, very little money, which is the whole point of this series. Uh, so once you've got your base built like this, um, we can add a, a realm of battle tile or a piece of MDF wood or whatever you've got. I, I've only built this board because I, I use a lot of aggregate all the time. Uh, and it saves a mess all over the carpet. So, um, uh, you know, it's something you can do in your garage or in your back garden, take the photos there. Because obviously I'm filming this, I've got to make sure I make as little mess as possible. So all we've got here is just the standard flat six by four, excuse me, two by two tile from Realm of Battle uh, from Games Workshop. You know, you can use the hill section in it, that will make it quite interesting. But uh, for this purposes, we're purely using the flat. But also as well, if you just got a bit of wood or you're using the plastic top to a container, that will also work as well. So it's just purely a flat surface. This isn't even painted, it's just purely gray. Uh, but we're not too worried about that because we're not gonna, you won't see any of this baseboard uh, moving forward. Next, we need to create a little bit of texture on the floor. This is great and if you've got a painted version, you just use that, that's fine. But what I wanna set up is I wanna set up a, uh, a reinforced position with a bit of height, uh, some foreground stuff, some mid ground, and then some height at the back, some background, and the models will be interspersed in the middle. And it just it just gives you a bit of depth. Um, I'm not a photographer. I'm not a professional photographer. Far from it. I, I think I've just got a good eye for stuff. You know, it's not boasting. You know, it, it's just how I imagine things look. I can't explain it. It's a bit weird, I know. Um, next, so to achieve that, what we've got is we've got another bit of foam board, just white foam board. And I made this for Adeptus Titanicus uh, well, probably about six months ago now. And all I did was I, I put the four Realm Battle tiles together. Um, I traced around it with a bit of paper, a bit of material actually. And then I laid it over, I cut it, laid it over the foam board and then cut around it. And then I just cut squares, just scored squares into it. I think they're three inch square or four inch square. So it, and then I just sprayed it black and then I used some Halfords gray primer and just patchily 
sprayed it on. So it's quite patchy. Um, hopefully you can see that in the photo. So I just want this to form the basis of my of my uh, installation, I guess we're going to call it. Um, I have pre-built this, so I need to remember how I built it. But essentially, we're going to put some big rocks at the back here. So we don't need to cover the back for this purpose, particularly if you're just going to take photos. But we need a little bit of the uh, of the uh, concrete base, I guess. So I think that's about right. Looks good to me. Uh, and then the next thing we're going to do, we're going to use this huge rock um, as a bit of a backdrop piece here. Um, £3.50 from a garden centre. Super cheap. Uh, if you're not using rocks in your battlefields, then you absolutely should because they are massive line of sight blockers, hard cover, um, and they're cheap as chips. Um, so definitely worth looking at. But we need to create a bit of a, a, bit of a bay here. So I've got another rock, it's got a bit of an angle to it, it's quite nice. Again, £3.50, super cheap. Uh, I'm going to lay that there, I think. Now we don't want to we don't want to go completely over here because we want to put a bit of interest at the back here. And, and to do that, we're going to use some Games Workshop terrain, the silos. I absolutely love these, they are a fantastic bit of uh, terrain. Most people have got these as well. Um, I'm just going to make a little bit of room at the front there. I think that looks really good. So you can see the, I'm just going to move it a little bit. So you can see here that the silo just peeks through the edge. And when we take the photo, you, you'll start to get a little bit of the contrast between the red, red orange of the silo and the gray of the rocks. It's just, again, interest. So that looks quite good. I'm quite happy with that. Um, there is a, there is a bit of board showing here, but once we put all the other elements in place, you will never see it, it doesn't matter. Um, I like the way we've got here. I'm gonna add uh, a crater in the foreground. This is from Un Unreal Wargaming Studios. I love their products. Um, uh, so we'll just, we'll just pop that there. Again, just to create a bit of interest. We're gonna cover this up later. You won't see the baseboard and it'll all be blended in with some aggregate. It'll be absolutely fine. Now, the key thing to this whole installation was I wanted to use the platforms from, uh, from Necromunda because um, I think they're really, really cool. But uh, the stanchions, I guess they're called, um, or the supports are too big. You know, I don't want my platform to be up here. I want it to be quite low. So all I've done, I've got a ton of these. So all I've done is I've just cut them down uh, to below this mark here. And I just used a, a little hobby saw I think I bought this from, from a hardware store for like three pounds. So super cheap and I just literally just cut it uh, and we, we ended up there. So I ended up with six, I think, in the end. Um, and then uh, I've got quite a few sets of this. So although you don't need many to do this though, so it's not that bad. Um, and essentially I, I tried to follow the, the line of the rock here that I've made. Um, it's a little bit out because obviously I pre-built this earlier. There we go. That's a little bit better. We'll move that in now. Oh, they're quite fiddly to to put together because you haven't got enough uh, little supports at the bottom. They do fall apart, but uh, we've got um, we're resting them against the rock, so it's not too bad. So you can see that the platform spans the entire the entire length of those rocks, and and that just suggests that it's all you know it's it's a platform part of something bigger later on i don't know but it's just like a small part of what we're trying to showcase here um and i've put a couple of these um barriers or fences i guess whatever you want to call them um my only issue with some of the games workshop training is it, it's too detailed it's got too much going on and these are the most simplest ones i could find um so i think they look all right but they, they'll just provide a little bit of cover for the miniatures behind uh, now we need to create a little bit more interest underneath here. There's nothing worse than trying to fiddle getting your models in and out. So we kind of want to shut that off to players. We don't want them going in there. So we're going to use three of the pipelines. Again, amazing pieces of terrain from Games Workshop. And we're just going to slot that in there. You might need to pull this out. Just like that. And then we're going to slot one in here. Yep, I think that looks really good. And then we've got a couple of these end pieces and we just wanna 
we just want to create the illusion that they go somewhere or they do something. This one hasn't got an end on it, but you can't see it and you won't see it in the photo, so it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to move that out a little bit. There we go. Make sure your pipes line up. You can use a bit of blue tack just to hold them together. That would work. Um, what else have we got? So that, I think that looks pretty good so far. And now what I want to do is I want to create... Um, I want to reinforce the fact that this is a really important installation, holding Prometheum or, or, or special or certain ores or whatever. So we need to reinforce that. And to do that, we've got a load of the original Forge World barricade sets. I absolutely love these. You've probably seen these in a lot of battle reports that, uh, that, I've, that I've filmed and the boards that feature in them. Now, a lot of you are saying to me, oh, well, you know, I haven't got, I haven't got these particular items. They're really hard to come by. Yes, they are. Um, I got these all on eBay, so really good find. But you could also use the, uh, I forgot the name of it now, the uh, oh, the Bastion sets. They come with the little barricades, you know, the, I'll put a picture up. Uh, so you can use those to create a wall just to reinforce the position. So what we're going to do is we are going to make it look a bit janky, I think the word is. Just to make it more interesting, you know, you could just put a straight line across the front. But I think it looks a little bit boring. We're trying to create interest here. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll use a lot of these corner sections just to create some interest. Uh, there we go. So for me, that looks quite cool. Um, we'll try and close the gaps, gaps up as best as possible so it looks all one piece. I appreciate this bit of a level change here from the Realm of Battle board and this um, foam board uh, tile that I've put on, but, but that's okay. And we do have a gap here that has no that has no concrete pad, but don't worry about that. We're going to use Games Workshop's next best product, which is their containers. They are absolutely amazing. We are going to pop it in there just to close the side of the board off. And then we've got a pallet also from Games Workshop and we're gonna stick that right in there and that hides all of that empty space. We are gonna add some aggregate later which will do that even further, but we're just gonna pop it up, prop it up rather with some barrels just to reinforce the story that it's a reinforced position. And they've got some supplies they could probably hold out against uh, some attackers for some time. Which looks quite good. Now, purposely gone for drab colours because uh, the legions are quite colourful. I guess if you're playing Raven Guard or Dark Angels, they're black, but um, or Iron Hands for that matter. But the the plainness of the terrain really helps bring out the high detailed and high colour of the models. So um, you, you'll see me do this all the time. The battlefields look quite drab, but that's purposely done that because uh, the models look so much better. Now that looks pretty cool and that has covered pretty much all of that and as I say we're going to put aggregate on it, you won't see it later on. Um, next, I love these little escape hatches, I might place it out on the board over here later or I might just put it in the front so you know if they get attacked they can escape. I mean ideally you'd put it out the back, you know somewhere here perhaps but it's just a nice little extra detail, um, we might put it over here later but we'll do that a little bit later on. Got a few more barrels. Um, I've got a ton of these, but I don't want to. I don't want to clog up the battlefield too much. I want it to look. I want it to look fairly realistic. I don't want to put a hundred barrels and two hundred crates on it. It would just look so crowded. Um, next, I love our little friend here. He features in most of the uh, the battle reports that we do. Um, I'm going to put him in the corner just for a little bit of interest. I might change him over later. He might be fixing the container. Or he might be over here fixing the end of this pipeline. It doesn't matter. Again, it's a little bit of extra interest. Um, it's a shame that's not the other way. Oh, I can't break it because uh, that would look better if it's the other way. But anyway, that's fine. Uh, next, what have we got? It's taking shape quite quickly. It's all done in real time. I haven't sped any of this up. I will speed the, uh, the aggregate up because that's a bit of a pain sometimes. But what we've got now is this is the magic ingredient and I uh, appreciate if you're at home um, you might not want to use this and that's absolutely fine. This board looks fantastic right now if you have a painted uh, Rumble Battle tile underneath or a textured tile or whatever. Um, 
it's done as far as I'm concerned. That would be great. But we're just going to add a little bit of aggregate here. There's only a tiny bit here. I've got a ton more down to my right hand side. So I'm going to dip in and dip out. I will speed this up. But all we're going to do, we are going to add this to the front. And what that does is that blends all of these gaps and holes. And it will help blend in this bunker over here. I will put photos up so you can see this. I appreciate all you can see is just me spreading aggregate all over the place. And if you're wondering what I'm using, uh, it's uh, it's it's black. I think it's silica. I think is what it is. Uh, but it's it's what people use in aquariums. It's twenty pound a bag, um, and half a bag probably even quarter a bag will easy fill a two by two section depending on how deep you want it of course i usually use four bags on a six by four uh and it's about 20 pound a bag so you know uh, i appreciate it's expensive but you could just buy one bag and get some really interesting effects alternatively you can use sand sand only really comes in sort of a couple of colors really sort of a light um sort of an off-white creamy color and then um you know some sands are quite red like mars and we'll use that later on in some of these setting the scenes later on. Okay, I'm going to speed this next section up. Uh, it's going to take two or three minutes, but I'm going to get a few more cups of this and just spread it around the board just to build up the layers as much as we can. All right, here we go. So, that, I mean, that literally took less than a minute to do. Probably didn't need to speed it up, to be fair. Um, and all we're doing, we're just putting enough just to create a little bit of depth in the battlefield. No battlefield is dead level. It just doesn't happen uh, unless you're playing on a on a concrete base somewhere. But you know, battlefields undulate. They've got texture to them. And when you put models down, they really help blend it all in. You know, it, it looks fantastic. So, you know, if you're going to use this segment to build some boards and take some photos with, it's perfect for that because you can bury the bases in. Now, a lot of you will say, oh, well, I've spent ages painting my models and I'm just going to stick them in sand and they're going to scratch them all. They really won't. Um, I've never scratched a model by using this stuff the whole two and a half years I've been running. It just doesn't happen. I mean, if you're going to pick your model up and screw it into the ground, absolutely you will scratch it. But we're all adults here. We're just going to plonk stuff on, move it around, you know, a Rhino or a Spartan, it will not scratch the undersides, I can promise you. Um, so if you've got the facility to do this, it's well worth doing it. Now for me, it offers a few uh, interesting points here. We've got the dark, the light, and then we've got the interest at the back here. So it, it's all about the colours and how they all bleed into each other. And I, and I think that looks really cool. I can't quite see at the front there, but I can imagine it's all at the front there. And we've, and we've covered that... Uh, We've covered that brown section that the the the, the pieces of scenery can mould it in. We want to get rid of that, so that's what we've done here. Now, what you can do if you want to if you want to create a bit more height or or to show that the the wind has uh, has been blowing in the direction of the facility and it's been building up against the front of the uh, of the defences, which which it would have done if it's if it blows hard enough. You can just heap them up and then fill the gaps in a little bit, just to show that that happening. And it does work really well. We don't want it too much on this one. And then what we can do is, you know, this stuff would just get absolutely everywhere, but we don't want to cake it all on. We just want to put the suggestion of a little bit has got through, maybe in a storm overnight. And again, it just adds that little bit of interest. Um, I don't want to put too much on, because I think it's, I think it's there really, to be honest with you. What we're going to do now is we're going to just add a little bit of extra texture. And this is just a different grade of aquarium silica. Uh, it's probably about 10 times bigger than the other stuff. And all we're going to do is, this is just to create some texture. Again, I'll put some photos up, what this looks like. I quite like that. I mean, I've got a whole tub there, but I literally used two handfuls of it. And then finally, the pièce de la résistance is we've got some some slate, and all I've done is I've got some larger slate pieces, wrapped it in a towel, and smashed it with a hammer. It takes ages. It's really boring, uh, but it does work. So what I'm going to do 
some big lumps in there. I don't want the bigger lumps, I only want the little lumps really. Again, we're just going to put that at the front here and it's purely to create interest. I uh, want some of these smaller ones, particularly around this crater, because when the shell hit and blew a hole in the ground, it would throw up all sorts of debris and, and bits and bobs. We probably want a bit of this in here as well. Different texture. And that just breaks up the boring black of the, uh, of the silica here. I've got a bit more maybe. Don't want to go overboard with it. You don't need too much. I think that's probably about right. You know, you can always add or take away. There's no hard or fast rule. What I might do is I might just add a touch more of this on top just to help blend those extra elements together. Doesn't matter if you bury them, you can always pick them out. But, you know, if the stones have been there for a long time, they will be covered partially by some of this uh, thinner stuff because it blows around. Uh, so that's fine. So we can just move it around, get the desired effect. Don't want it too big either because it looks out of scale to the models. Um, so these real small bits all look fantastic. All right, I'm really happy with the, how the board looks. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna try and introduce some models uh, onto the board. And again, we're just trying to set the scene up for the next episode, which is Firefight. Well, we'll do a few dice rolls just to, just to give you a few scenarios and we'll use this as the backdrop and the models that I've got available to do that. Uh, but all we're going to do purely as a as a photographic piece, we're just going to try and create some interest here. So we've got some Iron Hands Immortals with Volkites uh, and they are in this defensive position to uh, to fend off any enemy that comes their way. So we've got a load of the Immortals lined up on this wall here which you can see, which looks pretty cool. And then on the top here, you've got uh, all take more standing over the proceedings, directing the shots from his, from his trusty Iron Hands Immortals there. We don't have to fill the entire board up. You know, we can concentrate the models in one area. Looks kind of cool. You know, we all do this at home, don't we? We always, if we can't be bothered to paint or we don't want to go out or whatever, we always go, oh, I wonder how many points I've got. We got all our gear out on the kitchen table and take a photo and stick it on Facebook, you know. So so why not build a really cool little sort of display piece like this, almost like an Armies on Parade board. There's an idea. Um, and just, uh, you know, just take a photo instead of just sticking them on the kitchen table or on the carpet or whatever. Just build a little scene. It takes you an hour or so. Bit of fun. And then all of these elements you can bring into your battlefields if you can. So we've got a lovely line of Volkite on the top and then uh, some smaller, uh, so some other models at the front there just defending the position. We've got one more, we'll pop in there. And then attacking the, uh, attacking the Iron Hands, we've got the, uh, the Scourge of the Mechanicum here. I'm a bit biased, I do love Mechanicum, I can't lie. Uh, you know, it's all... It's all down to your own imagination. You know, if you're locked inside, you can't be bothered to paint. It's a bit of fun, you know. So I think that'll look quite good, really. You've got the, the red and Mechanicum flowing in to try and take over this facility from the Iron Hands. Uh, and if you really want to get really keen for the photo, you'll obviously notice that my Mechanicum have red Mars bases. The beauty of this stuff is dip your model in, give it a shake, and now they have fantastic black bases which tie in beautifully into the board appreciate you know if you've if you've got lichen or you've got you can buy the little small flowers or whatever on there you might not want to do that but i purposely make uh the bases for my armies bland and quite flat uh, because I think uh, too much of a dramatic base takes away from the model itself. And I know a lot of you will say, well, you know, I spend a fortune on basing materials, and they are absolutely fantastic, but sometimes they're, they're just too garish, and they, they detract from the model. I like real simple, real simple bases. One, because it's cheap as well, you know, you, you can't always afford third-party bases for every single model, particularly if you've got, you know, 100 Marines or whatever. Uh, and it's quick and easy as well, you know. So I love that about, about these bases. And all I do is I glue various rocks to the base, finish off with some of this over the top, uh, spray it black, and then uh, um, 
slight the colour after, so I went for a slight orange, dark orange, and after that I used Forge World weathering powders, and I just used two different colours and just patchily put them across the base, rubbed them in with an old um, uh, paintbrush, and it's done. So easy, so quick. Yeah, you can blast through fifty bases so fast. And that's and that's essentially it. You know, I'm just going to fluff the old uh, the bases a little bit here. And that's it. That's my scene. I think that's taken 20 minutes. Okay, I had a little bit of prep, you know, I had all the stuff out. I had a little practice, sure. But for a couple of hours, if you've got nothing to do, it's fantastic. What I'll do now is I'll take a, a load of photos. I'll take photos with uh, my phone, my iPhone, uh, and some photos with a digital camera. It's not a flash digital camera. It's only a D3300, I think, or 3500. I can't remember what it is. Uh, I'll put the details on the bottom and you can have a look at the photos. I'll put a bit of music over the top and you can have a look at those photos. I hope you enjoyed that photo montage there. Um, you know, you don't have to take a photo of the whole thing. You can just focus in on two or three models in the frame. Again, I'm not a photographer, and I'm sure there are people out there who are a way better photographer than me. But we've all got a phone, a smartphone at home, that we can use to take photos. And these cameras are fantastic, and you can get some really great shots. And the beauty of these phones is that, obviously, you can... Up up 
excuse me, upload them straight to Instagram. So it's a really quick process. And instead of getting your gear out on the kitchen table, you can put it in a little, little area, put some stuff down and take some photos. You don't even need this box area, like I said earlier. You could literally just get a piece of wood in the garage with a couple of lights. That's really important uh, from the front and one from the top if you can. Uh, and just start to build your board. You don't need edges and you can focus it all around one point and then take a photo of that point here. So hopefully you, you won't have seen any of the bits that I haven't covered in aggregate, um, you know, and you haven't seen too much of the, the gaps in between the the barricades and the floor, which you wouldn't have done. And, you know, we've got some shots there where we're over the top of the mechanical looking into the, uh, looking into the iron hands lines and then vice versa. We've got a shot down from the iron hands looking into the mechanicum. you know, and if you can get a backdrop, a black backdrop that works even better. Uh, you'd notice that the shots I did, I, I rolled the backdrop up here. I've got it kind of rolled up and rolled down, tie it up and it's just a black backdrop. And that's really good because if you're, if your backdrop is too busy, it detracts from the, what you're trying to take a photo of. And, and you'll notice that when I film games for the channel, uh, we are in a completely black room, massive curtain, 40 foot long curtain, um, seven foot high. Um, and that just helps blur out all the mess of family photos and TVs and curtains and windows and all sorts. And it, and it pulls the focus back onto the models, which is what we're interested in. We don't want to know what DVD collection you've got or uh, your family photos of your kids or whatever in the background. We don't want to see that. So I really hope you found this interesting. The plan is to put out at least uh, one of these a week along with Firefight where we'll go through some statistics. And then at the end, we'll do a back to school show where we'll try and address some of the trickier rules or some things that have caught me out in the past that I don't want you to be caught out by. So hopefully this little mini series will go some way to placate you because obviously we can't film games at the moment as we explained in the introduction and this is the best i can do i, I can't play a game on my own unfortunately um, so we always need opponents or a co-host to to give you that forwards and backwards but as i said if you're stuck at home you've got nothing to do or you're fed up of doing what you're doing just grab some stuff some lights and a camera phone and and away you go uh, and if you do get some photos and you've been inspired by this series, uh, please post it up on your Instagram and tag the channel in just at the 30K channel and, uh, and, and share your progress. And what I'll do if I get a load in, um, I'll do a show at the end of the Corona Chronicles and um, we'll flash them all up. I'll put them into a video, give you a bit of a shout out with your Instagram tag or whoever or who you are. Um, and plug your club if you've got one and we'll have a bit of a bit of a critique if that's all right I won't be too hard you know uh, but we'll have a little chat about the photos and what's good what's bad and and whatever else so if you're okay with that that would be great so tag the channel these photos that you do and we'll have a conversation about it maybe in a few weeks time once the photos have come through thank you so much for watching I really hope you've enjoyed this I hope it's been helpful and we'll see you in the next one